All right, everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up and use OpenDNS in Ubuntu. Now, if you don't know what a DNS is, a fundamental part on how the internet works. So you put in a website in your browser like google.com, the DNS server will take that request and come back with the IP address for google.com, so something the computer can use. Now, it works for us because we remember words, but computers need to work on network location numbers which isn't too memorable for us, so that's what DNS does. So the default setting for most, if not all, home routers is that your internet service provider does the DNS lookups for you. So the request goes from your computer on to the router, and the router uses its default settings and goes onwards to your internet service provider. The IP address comes back and your computer goes there, and there's no sort of content checking or no filtering that can be done there. Unless, a, unless your internet service provider doesn't want you to go to certain torrent sites, for instance, which even this might not allow. I'm not sure on that. Anyway, OpenDNS does a bit more. You can use content filtering, so I can filter out adware sites and malware sites, and I can also do top level domain blocking. I'll come on to that a bit more in a moment. So, the basics on if you just want to use OpenDNS for simple DNS lookups, so if we scroll down the page, it shows two IP addresses at the bottom. I'll put a note of those in the description below. But the way we enter that onto the computer, if you go up to the network menu at the top, go to edit connections, I know the menu might have been flickering a bit there on the video, that's just the screen's cast issue, I can't really do much about it. So depending on what you're using, wired, wireless or mobile broadband, I'm using wired. So select the connection, go to edit, go to IPv4 settings, now by default you'll be using the automatic DHCP method, so that's where your router allocates an IP address for you. All you need to put in there is the DNS servers, so we'll go to the list and select automatic DHCP addresses only, and then you can put the DNS server in there, so just put the two IP addresses in, so 208, then at the end, dot comma, space, so it looks like that. The alternative, which is what I've got it set to, is manual, so that's a static IP address. And then it's lost my settings, um, let's cancel that, go back in. Yeah, so manual, so I've got a static IP address. And that's useful because I've got loads of computers on my network and I need to know where each one is. So as you can see there, I've got in the DNS servers the two numbers for open DNS. So once you've set those, you can simply reboot your computer and then you'll be using open DNS. Alternatively, if you know the command line method to restart network services, feel free to use that instead of actually rebooting. I just thought I'd keep it simple in this video. The next feature of OpenDNS, which I mentioned, is the content filtering. I thought I'd show you a bit of that in this video. So you can see I've got custom level of filtering. But you could also go up, right up in using these default levels. High, so you can block social networking sites, video sharing. We can block adult related sites and illegal activities, which I suppose is perfect if you've got children, you don't want them looking at certain things on the internet. It's a good method of blocking. But I still want to use the internet, so I use ad I just block adware and parked domains. Next thing I do is always block these top level domains. Let me just open up this uh, little guide I wrote myself. Now, I'm blocking these domains because there's a high proportion of malicious and spam, spamming websites compared to legitimate websites. So the ones I block are .info, for information, so I block in the Cocos Islands, China, Vietnam, Cameroon, India, Russia, Armenia, Tokelau, Poland, and then two subdomains which are co.be, so that's a co-subdomain in Belgium, and .co-subdomain in Tuvalu. And that substantially reduces the amount of potentially malicious sites that my computer could end up visiting. Now you might not visit the website in those countries specifically, but something on the page could end up visiting that site. So if a legitimate site has been hacked, you could end up going to one of those sites again and you get malicious software ending up on your computer. Even in Ubuntu you can get it, <laughs> as I found. So for example, if I try going to google.in, this is what happens. This domain is blocked. Google.in has been blocked by your network administrator. 
And similarly, if I try visiting a malware site like starware.com, again, this domain is blocked because they're categorized as adware. So that's great. That's a nice bit of network security there. Uh, there's one more guide I will be doing with OpenDNS, and that's how to set up the automatic IP synchronization. Something you'll find out about if you choose to subscribe to OpenDNS and you want the content filtering. Now, if you can't get your router to automatically update your IP settings, like mine, it's locked down and none of these services are compatible with OpenDNS. It's a program called DD Client. I'll be showing that in another video. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.